Greetings and welcome as we now take a closer look at the valuable and ever popular 1917 double die obverse Lincoln Cent variety coin. The variety displays strong counterclockwise spread on most of the obverse details. This includes the details of Lincoln's coat, the bow tie, his lips, eye, and even uh, the details of the hair as well to some degree. But the strongest doubling for this coin definitely appears on the legend and the date, beginning with the letters of Liberty. There is some more minor doubling on the letters that are closer to the rim of the coin, especially the horizontal sections of the L, where doubling appears to the north. Similar doubling can also be found on the B, both inside the cavity of the roundings of the letter and towards the top as well. This is easy to spot in a high grade, but in lower grades, it might only appear as additional thickness on the affected areas of the letters instead, especially on the two already mentioned letters. In my opinion though, the best doubling on this coin can be found on the letters of in God we trust. And the best part is that the doubling can clearly be seen on every single letter, due to the fact that the rotation during the hubbing process took place in a counterclockwise direction. The doubling here is seen to display towards the right of all of the letters of In God We Trust. Die state isn't really much of a concern for this issue, due to the doubling being so strong in most areas. However, However, in some coins, a combination of a weaker strike and a later die state may conspire to at least conceal the doubling to a tiny bit, as can be seen here on the letters of in. Both coins are graded as MS67 red, but the coin towards your left is in an early die state with a sharp strike, and the one to your right is in a later die state. Looking specifically at the letters of trust, the doubling is not as crisp, lacking the clean lines you would hope to see at least. And looking towards the top of the letters, you can see the signs of die deterioration beginning to take form. So just keep that in mind when you're comparing and contrasting your coins to photos of known examples. The hallmark of this variety though remains the date. Here the doubling is definitely the boldest and easiest to spot, with every number doubled strongly towards the southwest. There should be clear notching on the top left and bottom right of the number 1, strong doubling on the rounding of the 9, with notching in the upper curl and a split in the tail of the 9 as well. The second number 1 should be doubled in the m really much the same way as the first, but with a slightly stronger amount of doubling due to the fact that it's closer to the rim of the coin. And then the top flag of the 7 should almost completely be doubled towards the self, but not so much that separation has occurred, and the lower tip of the number should then be doubled almost exactly due south as well. As an indication of the coin's true rarity, and why the coin is so expensive, despite how strong the doubling is on the coin, it took almost 60 years for the variety to achieve widespread recognition, with the Discovery coin only coming to light in 1977. Luckily though, the doubling is sufficiently strong so that the variety should be detectable in almost any condition from high-grade mint state examples right down to low-grade, worn-down and heavily circulated coins. Using the date as the chief point of interest for the coin, as well as the letters of We Trust, as an example, let's take a look at a few different grades, so you can know what to expect if you pull a coin like this from a coin roll or find it in a mixed bag or something like that. First up is an MS63 brown example. As you would expect, since this is still a mint state coin, the details are still easy to detect all round with no wear. The separation lines on the date are a little soft, but this is down to the strike quality of the coin more than 
anything else. And just out of interest's sake here is an MS-62 example of the coin in a later die state. You can see the die deterioration with the distinct uh, trail lines beginning to form towards the right of the letters in this case. Although the doubling itself is still very clear. Alright, so next up is an AU-53 example of the coin. You can see that the wear is beginning to set in in this case. The doubling on the letters of In God We Trust is still extremely strong and shouldn't be affected at this grade level to any significant degree. The date is also still very clear and the notching in the first one and the nine remain fully intact. The separation lines on the second one are all but gone here already though, leaving instead a number one that is both longer and thicker than it really should be. Dropping down to a VF35 from there, and here you can start to see the rigors of circulation taking its toll. The clear notching on the one becomes less clear, and the separation lines on the flag of the seven may also have become worn down at this point, leaving numbers that are thicker than they should be instead. On the date, the number nine still remains the best indication of the doubling, while the letters of In God We trust should still be clearly doubled. In an F10, a grade that should be quite common for this date, all that remains of the once clear doubling is the additional thickness on the numbers, as well as the unmistakable doubling on the top curl of the 9. Similarly, and depending on the wear pattern of the coin that you have, the doubling on the letters should now also become more obfuscated. The next step down is then a VG8 grade. Honestly, not a lot should change from the F10 coin discussed before, since most of the doubling is not seen on the extreme high points of the design. But moving down further to a G6, well, this is about as low as you want to go without the coin basically turning into a blank disc again. Under extreme magnification, the notching of the 9 could remain. Otherwise, the additional thickness of the numbers is your best bet for identifying the doubling here. And at this very low grade, the same pretty much goes for the letters of In God We Trust as well. The coin has surprisingly few reliable die markers to help establish authenticity. Although, in an earlier die state, there is a diagonal die scratch from the right serif of the T in Liberty traveling down towards the center of the letter, with a less obvious die scratch connecting the T towards the Y as well. And the reverse notes a small die gouge traveling south from the right of the second U in Unum. Although this is not present in all examples of the coin, meaning that it probably happened sometime during the minting run for this issue. The auction record for this coin was set in 2019, when a PCGS graded MS67 plus red example was sold at auction by Stax Bowers for $120,000. If you liked this video, then consider watching a similar video about the 2004 Double Die Reverse Penny next. For the World Numismatic News, I am Numisman saying thank you for watching, keep collecting, and have a fantastic day.